132 will begin a 12-day mission to add some finishing touches to the Russian segment of the station and to fortify the outpost for the post-shuttle era. The flight will deliver the Russian-built mini-research module MRM-1 to the station. The module is named Rasviet, the Russian word for dawn. During three scheduled spacewalks, the shuttle crew will install a backup space-to-ground data communications antenna and will remove and replace six batteries on the P-6 truss. The crew will also attach a new tool platform to the Dexter robotic hand and perform other maintenance work. The STS-132 mission marks a poignant milestone for NASA as Atlantis prepares to spread its wings on its last scheduled flight. The STS-132 crew members are all flown astronauts, including one former space station resident. The commander of Atlantis is Navy Captain Ken Ham. During this flight, he will fly Atlantis to its docking and also assist in robotics work. He first flew in space as the pilot of STS-124. Navy Commander Tony Antonelli is the pilot of Atlantis. He will serve as the mission's quarterback or intervehicular officer overseeing the three spacewalks and will fly Atlantis as it undocks from the station. He first flew as the pilot of STS-119. Dr. Garrett Reisman is Mission Specialist 1. A former space station resident, he lived and worked on the ISS for three months during Expedition 16 and 17. He will conduct two spacewalks during STS-132. Mission Specialist 2 is retired Air Force Colonel Michael Good, launching on his second mission aboard Atlantis. During his last flight, STS-125, he performed two spacewalks during the final Hubble Space Telescope upgrade mission. He will perform two spacewalks on this flight. Navy Captain Steve Bowen, Mission Specialist 3, is NASA's first submariner astronaut. He is making his second voyage to the ISS after STS-126. He will make two spacewalks on this flight. Mission Specialist 4 is Dr. Piers Sellers. For this, his third space flight, the veteran spacewalker will operate the station's robotic arm. STS-132 features a mix of ISS construction and upgrades for the station for its life after shuttle. The number one priority is to deliver the mini research module, number one, also known as MRM-1, Russian built module, takes up about almost a half of the payload bay, weighs roughly 18,000 pounds, maybe 22, 23 feet long or so, and uh, bring that up and attach it to space station. STS-132 will also deliver some new equipment for station aboard an integrated cargo carrier, the ICC VLD-2. On flight day three, immediately after docking, Sellers and ISS flight engineer Tracy Caldwell Dyson will grapple the ICC carrier with the station's robotic arm. They will temporarily stow the carrier on an attachment point on the station's mobile base system. One side of the ICC carrier contains a redundant KU-band space-to-ground antenna, called the S-Gant for short, and its boom. This antenna is a backup for the primary S-Gant assembly currently used for high-rate data communications to and from the ISS. The redundant S-Gant and the enhanced tool platform for Dexter, the station's robotic hand, will be installed to the ISS during EVA-1. The other side of the ICC rack contains six new batteries for the ISS solar arrays on the P6 truss. The battery's removal and replacement during EVAs 2 and 3 is similar to that accomplished during STS-127. The old batteries will return to Earth aboard the ICC pallet in the shuttle's payload bay. At launch, the Rosviet docking port module will contain U.S. cargo and a spare elbow joint for the European robotic arm that will be attached later to the Columbus lab module. Rosviet will also carry an airlock for the future Russian multi-purpose laboratory module. We're going to attach 
MRM-1 to the nadir side, which is the Earth-facing side of space station, uh, just aft. It's basically between the FGB and Node 1. So it's uh, the very beginning of the Russian side of the space station. On flight day five, Ham and Antonelli will grapple Rosviet with the shuttle arm and hand it off to the station's big arm, operated by Reisman and Sellers, for its berthing to the Zarya module on station. Again, that's Garrett that's running the arm for that operation because he has some real world experience. And then our, our payload commander for the MRM-1 is Pierce. He has Russian language experience, which is really helpful. We will use the laptop to talk to the, the Russian module, we'll wake it up. It's got two little brains in there. Mm -hmm. And we'll ask it to extend a, um, a docking probe. It basically has the same docking system that a Soyuz has. Rosviet's hatch will open on flight day seven as ISS cosmonauts Oleg Kotov and Alexander Skvortsov install air ducts to cleanse the air in the new module. Actual outfitting of Rosviet will not occur until after Atlantis leaves the station. During STS-132, Riesman, Bowen, and Good will step outside in round-robin teams to perform three scheduled spacewalks. On EDA-1, Riesman and Bowen will install the redundant S-Gant antenna and its boom on the station's Z-1 starboard truss. Sellers and Dyson will operate the station's robotic arm. My job is actually to go out on the tip of the robot arm in, uh, out during the spacewalk grab the boom first, and then while I hold on to the boom, they fly me up to the top of the space station, and then Steve and I will plant that thing like a flag on the very, very top. And then we, I go back and get the dish, and, and we put the dish on top of the boom. We have a new tool platform uh, for, for Dexter that allow uh, this robot to carry out large pieces of equipment and, uh, and, and, and do the same kind of re remove and replace activities we do during a spacewalk. On EVA-2, Bowen and Good are scheduled to remove and replace three of the six solar array batteries on the station's P6 truss, as Sellers and Reisman maneuver the ICC carrier robotically. When we move the pallet around, they can grab a battery, add a pallet, put the battery in the truss, and then they grab another battery. So we need to move the pallet around. It'll take uh, pretty much the whole time, about six and a half hours, to get out there, all the way out there, uh, translate out to the end of the truss, and do the batteries. And, and come back inside. On the third and final EDA, Good and Reisman are scheduled to remove and replace the remaining three batteries. Sellers and Dyson will provide robotic assistance with the station's big arm. We'll take those out there and, and uh, take them off the pallet and put them into the, uh, the truss out there. And then we'll take the old ones off the truss and put them back onto the pallet. You work with people every single day and you get out to the contractors and you get to meet the people that have poured you know, their life's work into making something function the way it's supposed to function and the, it's, it's eye-opening. You, know, you really get a sense of how big this team is and what it can accomplish. The people that work in this business are doing it because they love it. They're so dedicated to what they do. I think from the beginning of human spaceflight to where we are today, may someday be referred to as the golden age of space travel. It's great to pull everybody together and help them realize the importance of what they're doing and at the same time you got to really appreciate every minute of our jobs. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, back with uh, continuing coverage of the activities on orbit as the Expedition 23 crew uh, enjoys a day off uh, on the International Space